Good evening. Welcome to another fun-filled episode of the Blue Ribbon Podcast. It's been about three weeks since our last confession. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to talk about, uh, well, we'll get you caught up on some recent events, and then we'll start talking about load selection. Gosh, almighty. <clears throat> There's been a lot of stuff happening over the last three weeks. Um, where do you want to start? Well, I don't know. It's, you know, it's, it's been, it's been very, very exciting. You know, we've been trying to add some trucks and add drivers and I don't, did we, have we done a podcast since we went to Michigan, looked at the, I don't believe so. Liners, so we yeah. had, we had a road trip I and mean, we took Carl and, Went to Michigan, looked at some gliders up there, and <clears throat> had a uh, pretty, you know, pretty uh, exciting twenty-four hours. <laughs> it started snowing, and we uh, yeah, seven degrees. Yeah, um, yeah, and we were looking we, at these so, trucks, and so Larry puts out a call on social media that we're looking for trucks, specific trucks. 2003 to 2007 non-deleted no, no, 99 to 2000 oh, 99 to 2007 non-deleted mm -hmm. uh that brought <clears throat> that brought hilarity because people apparently don't know when emissions began in 2004 so we get <clears throat> a response this guy's got some gliders for sale 07 gliders now i'm not a bit <clears throat> i'm not a big fan of gliders now that we have one um not because there's really anything wrong with them, um, but they're 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 proving to to have some issues that we didn't quite think about. When a glider is built, uh, you don't get a full parts list like you do on a factory built truck. And so, if a glider didn't come with an engine, you go to the Freightliner dealer and tell him you want a fan clutch. They're like, "Well, bring it in, and we'll match it up." You know that it's. There's a lot of inefficiencies with gliders. And, you know, if, if we're, you know, driver calls me, I got a problem. Okay, well, let's identify the problem. Let's find the parts. Let's get the parts. Let's go find somebody to put it on a 10-hour break. Well, I ain't got time to take the truck down, take it apart, take the parts into a dealer somewhere. So gliders are a little less attractive to me personally now. Now, the glider we own came with a motor. So it's not a big deal, but we got no, I, we got no data for transmission, no data for rear ends. So we find these trucks. <clears throat> well, let's, we let's, decide, let's explain that for so people understand, you know, a glider is a new truck, uh, built on the assembly line, but it has to, it only has one of the three major components. You have to provide two of the three major components and that's what makes it a glider. Now, most people, order what's called a rolling glider. It comes with um, the axles in it. And then you put your own engine and transmission in it. So there's the two components that you put in. But you can order it with a motor and no rear ends or, uh, or transmission, which is what evidently this one, how this one was built. Uh, because uh, we've got motor, is it, we got motor bill we just don't have the other bill correct. is that correct okay. correct so we we can't we don't know what axles are in it we don't know what transmissions in it is so every time we go to order something we have to basically bring the part in and match it up so that's and the and the whole reason behind that is it allows you to well up until now and it's it's over with now but up until this year you could have a new truck but with old technology right. so it accomplished what we try to do with older trucks by about allowing you to have a, have a newer truck so that's what a glider is just to set you straight yeah so, so and, and in the case of these trucks <clears throat> they came with an engine which is a big help because now you've got data for ac lines and um <clears throat> all that kind of stuff wiring whereas I, I would rather be i would rather be chasing parts for a rear axle than i would for engine components you know because all these different trucks we've got the ac dryers in a different place on every truck for whatever reason you know and it's just a little bit different design so we find these trucks guys got i don't know six or eight of them they're oh sevens um so we have gotten pretty good pretty proficient now at figuring out the rear ends what transmissions are in them the model numbers the the overdrive ratios because you got to know all this stuff 
if you're looking for a used truck, you've got to be able to determine, you know, <clears throat> what's this thing going to, going to do when I get it on the road. And a big part of that is what rearing gear ratio does it have? What transmission does it have? What RPMs are going to turn between 60 and 65 mile an hour? And so these trucks were kind of peculiar because they had some really weird um, axle ratios. They had like a they 293. Every one yeah, of them was different. different. <clears throat> there was a 293. There was a 307. There was a 358. Um, so we narrowed it down. There was two potential trucks that that would work based on the transmission setup um they were built by this company um so we 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 get carl and uh our our guy and uh <clears throat> pay him for his time and his gas and his travel and uh and we go to the frozen tundra of chicago it was like seven degrees when we got up there and uh then we went I went up to Grand Rapids to look at these trucks and Carl spent about two hours on each truck. And, you know, when you send Carl to go look at a truck, you know, he's got a creeper, he's got tools, he's got on gloves and flashlights. And I mean, if there's anything wrong with it, he's going to find it. So we make an extensive list. We make an offer. They decline the offer. So we move on. Um, you know, I've heard Kevin Rutherford talk about this for years. You've got to be willing to spend a little bit of money on a truck to let it go, you know, to either dyno it or take somebody like Carl with you, do the rig dig reports. Um, you know, you can't just go buy unless it's just like a super deal. A buddy of mine bought a truck today for $5,300, you know, uh, a pretty solid unit. Um, at five grand, that's what I sold my truck for when the motor blew up five grand you know he he paid 5300 this one's got a motor um you know <laughs> and a steering wheel <laughs> yeah yeah and apparently the interior is pretty rough so they're you know him and his wife are gonna be doing a lot of cleaning uh but otherwise you know it carl gave it a pass um and he picked up a truck for less than six thousand dollars y'all that's awesome um so you know here we drove what 1400 miles in about 30 hours um, you know, paid Carl, paid the fuel, paid the meals, um, you know, the bourbon, everything, you know, it was, um, we didn't pay for the bourbon. We did not pay for the bourbon. Well, <laughs> yeah, never mind. I'll leave that alone. Easy. Um, so I'm still you know, paying for the bourbon, by the way. Still, yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> Yeah, don't 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 drink a lot of bourbon and try to walk through eight inches of snow. It's just we'll just leave it at that. It's you know bad idea. Be, because I respect my elders, I didn't run video. You know what I mean? I could have a thought about it. Like, because he likes his job, he didn't run video. Well, that too. Anyway, um so we did that. So we have now gone and looked at three trucks and passed on all of them. Uh we've got about three more we're going to go look at. But, you know, <laughs> we can't just go buy the first thing we've seen. We've done that. We've been there, done that. We've got podcast episodes to tell you about those trucks. Yes, we do. Uh, you know, you got to be willing to put the time and money in to going in and finding a truck. Now, when you find a good one and you get a deal on it, there ain't nothing better than that. So we've had, I think we talked about the wreck of, of, of Metro on the last podcast. So well, except that we bought it. Yeah. Yeah. We can conclude that story. We did buy it back. Um, so it will be back in our possession and then we'll decide what to do with it. And, uh, so we went and looked at trucks. We've, we've hired drivers, we've hired uh, probably three drivers since we talked last. Yeah. Uh, we got a couple more in the pipeline, so it's, it, we've been, we've been busy. Um, that's why we haven't done a pet podcast. So, yeah. Yeah. Cause it's been, you know, it's been pretty much wide open. Um, so that, that kind of gets you caught up on what we've been doing the last three weeks since we did a podcast. We, we haven't been sitting around neglecting it. We've been busy or traveling. Um, so, all right. <laughs> Excuse me. Well, I guess let's get into the subject. Um, 
you know, it, listen, if, if you've been around Landstar for five minutes, um, you know that there are common themes of controversy. We covered it in two episodes ago, uh, and it keeps coming back up, um, uh, you know, bait and switch agents and, um, third party loads. And so, you know, we've, we've beat all that to death. What we want to talk about here is more of a strategy, the strategy that we use, um, that works like a charm works every time works in every environment. Uh, we start with revenue, you know, now obviously we have an area that we're going to run our trucks cause our trucks can't go to California. So we're pretty much East of I 35, uh, very little Texas, Texas just doesn't fit well into our, it's not that it's terrible. It's just, you know, from pretty much from Georgia to Illinois, over, we run the Northeast except for New York City, and we stay out of Florida. So that's pretty much our our wheelhouse. Uh, we go to Michigan occasionally, but Michigan is a little bit – sometimes it's good going in, not coming out. Um, but lots of Carolinas up to the Northeast. You know, we, we run a ton of Connecticut uh, back to the Carolinas. It's a really good lane. We got uh, – <clears throat> agent relationships going both ways, really good freight, really good, consistent, solid stuff that we can count on. Um, now just a sidebar production meeting here on the fly. Do we, do we tell that story about me getting in trouble with customer service or we save that for its own show or do we, do we tease them or do we let them have it now? Let's just hang on to it for a little, we, we, we may get to it later or it might okay. make it, it it's probably worth it of its own show um, <laughs> yeah 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 it sure is uh yeah so yeah just just keep that and you and you keep that under you uh yeah i got i got i got a call from customer service and it was awesome and, and we got to be kind of careful there too we don't wanna... yeah you got to be diplomatic that's a good word for that so anyway um uh so for us, it begins with revenue. We have a daily revenue number that we have to hit. And if loads gross, you know, what, when we talk about these figures, we're talking about gross money, all the fuel surcharge, all the exhaust oils before, before any percentages are taken out. One number, everything added all up together. And for us today in this market, that minimum is $1,400. Now that means if we pick up a load today and deliver it tomorrow, it has to pay at least $1,400 or we're not going to do it. It doesn't matter if it's $7 a mile. If it ain't $1,400, bucks, we are not going to do it. Now, the way the rates have been over the last few weeks, um, you know, we could make that number probably $1,800 because there, you know, there's been some monster loads uh, come up in the last two or three weeks. But this, you know, 1250 was our minimum during the pandemic. And when the market picked up, we, we raised it to 1400. Well, let's so, talk about, let's talk about why we, how we get to that number. Okay. Because <clears throat> all of this is based on cost per mile. You know, we, with us, we have to know what it costs us to operate the truck. We have right. to know what it costs us to pay the driver. We have to know what it costs us to pay um, ourselves and make a profit. So right. we, if this is just not a number we choose out of, out of thin air, <clears throat> it's a number that is a, as a result of, of the math that we do to make all those things happen. You know, we, our drivers make really, really good money. We I make really good money. And, you know, so we have to, uh, we, we have to back into that number. It, it's just not, it, it, you know, we just didn't come up with that number. So, all this starts with cost per mile. If, if you don't know what it costs to operate your truck, really no, not you think you do, or, you know, I, so this, if you really don't know and you haven't done the numbers, you put them, you know, you don't know what your expenses are. You don't know what each mile costs you to drive that truck. Then, you know, you don't really know whether or not you, you can haul that, that, that load or not, or there may be loads on there that you could haul, but you don't think you can because you don't know exactly what it costs you to operate your truck. 
So that's the very, very first thing is knowing that. Then you can come up with, okay, well, what do I need then to make every day? Because now I know what my costs are. Right. So, so that's how we got to that fourteen hundred. That, that's what makes it work for us with now, our cost structure. So here's the big thing that can probably trip some people up. If a if a if a load for a day has a minimum of fourteen hundred dollars, then a load for two days has a minimum of twenty eight hundred. Right. And a minimum of uh, three days has a minimum of forty four hundred. Okay. So. So we call that hold time. Yeah. It has to pay for however many days that you're on it. It has to pay that daily rate. Now, it, it, it's <clears throat> easy to get a little blindsided sometimes, especially in a market like this, because you'll see a load that's uh, um, 350 a mile and it's 720 miles. Well, that really needs to be a two-day load. Because by the time you pick it up, you have your transit time and your unloading time, that load is going to cost you a day and a half of hold time. Not counting your deadhead to get there, whatever that right. is. So Right. So if now it, that you know, 730 you, mile load is now about a, you know, an 850 mile load could be. Right. So, <clears throat> so it's got to have, so if it's a 700 mile load, it's got to pay 2,800. You know, well, now it's, right. it's gotta be $4 a mile if, you know, it, it, because here's the thing. All right. If, if it's a day and a half, well, now what do you do with your next half a day to get into your third day? Cause if it looks really good and it's 2,100, Hey, it's 2,100. I can pick it up today and deliver it tomorrow. Well, it's true. If you pick it up first thing in the morning. And you drive all day and then you're not getting unloaded till noon, 1300. Well, now you've got to have a load to go into the next day. That's got to cover enough to cover that lost hold time of being able to cover that load. Now on a market like this, you look for 400 mile loads, you know, that pay really good and get you in 16, 1800 bucks a day. Well, if you're, if you're hitting that kind of daily rate, you know, and you do five loads at 1600 bucks a piece. Uh, that's eight thousand dollars. You know, well, eight thousand dollars is a good week by any by any measure by any standard. But it's being able to execute and manage that hold time uh, along with your hours of service. The way we run, uh, pretty much with everybody, is we run balls to the wall from Monday to Friday, and then do a restart, and then wide open restart because it's so much easier to have that fresh clock on Monday morning or Sunday evening. And then you don't have to worry about uh, hours of service. So you can, you can tie the loads together, but you've got to have enough room in between to make up for loading and unloading time. Now the new hours of service have helped this a ton because now you're not burning 14 while you're sitting at the dock for two hours. And, and that can count as part of your break. So the new hours of service have kind of been a game changer in that respect because uh, it really helps us manage our clock and manage our time. But that's, that's the basic strategy because, you know, uh, uh, at 1,400, uh, our minimum is then 7,000, 7,200? 7,000. 7,000. Because remember, we, we count the weekend as one and a half days. Right. So, <clears throat> so if there's a, cause I, when I came up on this myself, right before my truck blew up, I kind of hit on this. Um, cause I, I had to simplify the process, right? It was so difficult before, uh, I, I'm, I had to come up with a way and I'm like, okay, what, what's the, I need a quickest way to decide whether a load's good or not. And I, I kept that time by myself, I came up with 1250, you know, I did kind of pull that out of the air because I was thinking, okay, 1250, I do five loads at 6250. If I do 6250 in revenue, regardless of the breakouts, regardless of the excess orals, I'm going to make 4,500 bucks to the truck. If I make 4,500 bucks to the truck, everything's okay. All the bills are paid. I got profit. I pay for my fuel. 
you know, so I was kind of coming at it just from a, what's a number that I can pick that makes these loads easier to decide on a moment because you're driving down the road and you get the load alert. Okay. Yes or no. Do I want it? Do I not want it? I hit the button. I call them. Does it work? Yeah. Great. Book it. If not, no, nope, no thanks. Next load. Um, so there's, there's a big piece of that that just is peace of mind, you know, that here, my load alert is set with specific parameters, specific, uh, geo, uh, geofence around my location, the States that I'm willing to go to the places I'm willing to go. Uh, and when the, when it lights up, I look at it and I call the agent. If it's good, I book it. If it's not move on to the next one, it's no big deal. Now, it has been a little different because the way the market is right now, you can kind of, you can kind of wait a little bit. You know, we like to have our trucks booked up just because it makes things easier. And in almost every market, it's better to be booked out a week ahead than to not be. But we've got one guy that, you know, it makes Larry nervous wreck, you know, cause he's booking them one at a time. But what he do $11,000 last week. Ten thousand seven hundred five dollars. You know, I'm looking at all of our loads last week, by the way, and we have we have six trucks running right now, and the average is four or five loads each. And out of all the loads we booked last week, only two of them are at that fourteen hundred dollar mark. The rest of them are above that forty. You know, uh, twenty two hundred, two thousand nineteen, seventeen, seventeen, two thousand. Uh, fifty one hundred, uh, twenty five hundred, two thousand, thirty four fifty. So twenty one hundred, twenty one hundred, twenty two hundred, twenty. 2200, so even though we say fourteen hundred, that's the minimum. That by no right. means is what we're looking for. You know, out of all the loads we did last week, only two of them are fourteen hundred. So yeah, I mean, hell, if I book a fourteen hundred dollar load right now, I'm disappointed. I kind of feel bad. You know, I'm yeah. like, is that the best you could do? You know? <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. Now, if it's if I did take a big one that was like seven hundred miles, you know, um. You know, there's one agent we do a lot of drop and hook stuff with, and and I can take a 700 mile load with them because I know the drop and hook takes literally 20 minutes and I'm gone. Well, then I, you know, I can put a 2500 and a 1400 together if that 1400 is like 350 miles, you know, and and now I've I've got you know 3900 dollars in three days, you know, or two days really, you know. So what 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 you're what we're trying to accomplish here is that get your eye off the home run fence. You know, that's, yeah. that's usually not the best thing for you because the whole time is too long. Okay. And we've proved it over and over and over again. You take a seven or 800 mile load. We can take two 400 mile loads and beat that every time. And, and because you, you can do two of them in the time it takes to do one of those day and a half loads, you know? Right. Um, and then, you know, so, um, so that, that's our strategy here. Slow and steady wins the race. You know, we're, we're, we're base hit team, not a home run team, you know? And I mean, occasionally when we got one low, we got two late. Well, we have one we do every week. There's kind of a home run. Okay. Hmm. But we've got, we had one, uh, set the uh, combination last week of, of two loads back to back, same agent that was, um, $4,700 in two days, two days, $4,700. So, um, but it, it's just two days. It, it wasn't three days, you know? Um, and there's a reason we're using the word strategy instead of preference as a driver. If I had my preference, I'd probably run from Columbus, Ohio to Seattle and back, you know, except in wintertime, because I would love to just hook to a trailer, be on it a couple days, unload it, reload it, be on it a couple days. You know, but I'm not, I'm here to make money, you know, and, uh, it's difficult to run coast to coast because loads will pay great one way and they suck coming back, you know, and I can, yeah, sure. I can go on the load board and I can book $11,000 out to Seattle and then come back for 3,400, you know, uh, or, or 5,000, you know, come back for half. Well, I can do the same amount of revenue on the East coast, you know, running back and forth between South Carolina and Connecticut, Connecticut and North Carolina, or, you know, Pennsylvania or New Jersey back to North Carolina. Um, I can do the same kind of money and not 
be, uh, you know, of course I'm, I'm trying to stay close to home too, you know, cause I've got wife and three kids, you know, um, I, I can't run out there like that anymore, but it's, it's business strategy, right? And it's one of the things that we beat into our, our, our candidates here, um, our, our program participants is that driving the truck is 10% of what you're doing. You're, you're here to, you're here to make a profit. You're here to make money or stack revenue. And when you don't have this kind of basic strategic plan of how you're going to pick loads, that's how you end up getting sucked into this nonsense of, uh, well, they posted a load for three thousand dollars, and then told me it's twenty seven. Yeah, because it's it's not freaking rocket science. It's a third party load. They're putting it on the board to see to get you to call so they can snag a truck and call the broker and try to get the load. That's it. That's all there is to it. They're not trying to cheat you. They're not trying to short you. They're not trying to fool you. There's there's this this God. I saw a comment today on Facebook. Yeah, so they wait for a BCO to call and take less money. You idiot. Um, they're just trying to book loads and do what it takes. Yes. It drives me crazy when they call me, my phone number got tied to one of the trucks that was sitting last week. So it showed available all week and they blew my phone up and there's nothing I can do about it. You know, they, Hey, you want to load? You want to load? You want to load? No, I don't want to load. I can't take a load. I'm, I'm on a truck, you know, of course, telling somebody you got more more than one truck at Landstar and they look at you like you got three heads. Well, what do you mean you're not available? Because I'm driving a different truck. Well, why are you driving? It says you're here, you're in Columbus and your truck's yeah. sitting and you haven't got a load on it. Yeah. Oh, listen, I had a, I had a, <clears throat> when one of the trucks had a uh, rear end gear problem this week. And so, you know, I, I'm on automotive, which God, I hate automotive, but I'm on this automotive load. And the rear end starts going out and I call the agent and I'm like, Hey, I'm having a problem breakdown. Well, I heard her take a breath. Like she's going to freak out. And I'm like, wait, I have a spare truck. I just need to go get it. You have a what? You have a what? I said, I just need to go get the spare truck. I'm good for the rest of the week, you know? And it took like two or three phone calls for them to, un so you, is your truck fixed yet? No, the truck's not fixed. I have a spare truck. Here's the truck number. Just move the loads over to this one. So anyway, you know, it's just, and I have to remind myself we're the outlier. We're, we're different and they're not, they're used to one, one guy, one truck. Um, but you know, anyway. I've been here since 2012 and almost without fail, every conversation I have with Jacksonville, I have to explain to them that I am a fleet. We have nine trucks, you know, they, it, it's like, there's no designation in the system for a fleet owner. So, and they just assume because the other 9,000 some odd people that call them are one truck, one owner. So it's just, we're, we're such a anomaly that they don't understand, nor they do they even expect that to be the, the situation. It, it's comical. It, it, it's yeah. fun. <clears throat> Listen, y'all agents, Agents are not your bitch. Okay. They're not that th that's not their purpose in life. Their purpose in life is to go book freight with customers, third party or direct, whichever it is. Okay. Your job, your responsibility is to haul that freight. Our responsibility as agents and BCOs is to work together, not have this nonsense ridiculous unacceptable adversarial relationship you, that, but, that, but 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 they put loads on the board that aren't really loads they put loads on the board for prices when i call and get one of them it's not that price they're screwing me they're playing this game i don't have time for this game i'm out here trying to make money i don't have time to play these games what's that you've seen that meme of sam elliott and it says life's hard. It's harder if you're stupid. Yeah. Um, 
if you want to understand how the system works, it's not hard to figure out. But the problem that we have in America, especially, is people don't want to figure out how to, you know, how to work the problem. They just want to be pissed off all the time. They want somebody to be mad at. They want somebody to blame. Um, and, and then they once they have identified the enemy, they have absolved themselves of all responsibility. Well, it's not my problem. It was that stupid agent. You know, and when I see something pop on Facebook, with these agents, dude, there's 1,400 of them, okay? They're not all working together in a smoky, dark room trying to figure out how to screw a BCO. Um, now, I'm sure there's a bunch of them like to get together and choke some BCOs. Um, but if, 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 they, if they got what they wanted, if these guys who bitch about this all the time, because their response is, or their answer to this is, Landstar should not allow that, okay? So if, if that were to happen, if they were to get, if they were to rub on the side of the little lamp and the genie jumped out and they said, we wish there's nothing that they just wouldn't do that. Here's what would happen now. Okay. The only, we, we, we illustrated it. The loads on the board would go from 60,000 to about 20,000 with, with a snap of the genie's finger, because yep. none of the loads on the board would be speculative. They would only be what agents have in their hand, direct customer in their hand. And everybody loves that freight. But what you don't understand is there's 10,000 of us drivers. There's not enough of that direct freight for everybody to have one of them on a single day. So this speculative freight has to be on there. Otherwise, we don't have enough freight to run. We make a lot of money on speculative freight because we understand what it is. We don't get all bowed up in the ass. Because Listen, I booked one. Let me find I booked one just, I think it's for my dispatch customer, but... I, I, t I booked a load for um, $2,500, I think. No, 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 no. There's 21 on the board. I called to get it, and the guy can only get it for 19 I said, no problem. I said, let's work together on this. I said, how about we, you know, we do some, you know, you help me out with some asset source. I ended up getting a load from him for $2,200 and 400 and some of it was accessorials. It was better than what it was on the low board for because mm -hmm. I didn't start cussing him out and blowing him out and telling him he's a, you know, he's lying, thieving turd. You know, I said, look, I, I get it. You know, that's what the customer will pay. Let's, what can we do here? You know? So it, you just don't, that's not what they're trying to do. They're just trying to get freight off of another board that has no prices on it. Right. They put it on our boards. So we have a chance to look at it. If we like it, they'll they'll bid it and try to get it for something close to what they thought they could get it for. And like I say, we never hear the complaints when they come back and we get more. Carrie booked a load this week and ended up getting $200 more than we booked it for. Yep. So it just happens. But nobody complains about that side of it. It's only those damn agents. They put that on the board and they never, you know, they now call and they want to, you know, they want to, they want to lower the price because they're taking the money. Well, if you understood how this works and, and look, if you're going to be at Landstar and be a professional, you know, uh, independent contractor business doing with business, you ought to understand how the business works. If you understand how the business works, you understand that an agent cannot cut your price and give it and, and pad his side because he gets paid on a percentage just like we do. And he gets paid from Landstar, not from the customer. He's not in the line of the money. Okay, the freight bill goes to the customer from Landstar. The settlement comes to the agent and the BCO at the same time for, at a percentage, by the way. We're at 65%, they're at 7%. Well, let's talk about the elephant in the room here, okay? <clears throat> if you're an... Imagine you're an agent for a second. Okay. Let's say you're one of these purists that, that won't even look at the third party stuff. You, if it ain't direct, you ain't going to haul it. Okay, fine. You got that right. I, you know, whatever. I haul a lot of direct freight. You're talking I about an agent now or a BCO? Huh? We, are you talking about an agent or a BCO right now? Well, I, I'm talking about a, a, a BCO putting themselves in the position of an agent. Okay. okay. You're, uh -huh. you're a BCO. You want all this direct freight. Okay. Put yourself in the, in the, in the, in the position of the agent. You're now the agent. And it's your job to go out and get direct freight. You're going to walk into that customer. And what are you going to say? I want your business. What, what do you have to offer them? Well, I've got, uh, I've got a, a network here. I've got 10,000, uh, trucks available to me. I've got this, that, and the other and Landstar and blah, 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 blah. And so they, 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 they book that contract. They, 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 they secure that freight. 
and then a BCO comes in and treats the customer like dirt, won't answer the damn phone, won't tell them where they're at, won't deliver on time. What are you going to do then? You have just gone out beating the pavement. You have tried to secure this direct freight that everybody says they want. Oh, and by the way, when the market's up like this, y'all drop direct freight like a bad habit. Because the direct, a lot of that direct freight's custom, uh, uh, contract, contract, rate. contract. Yeah. Okay, so the 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 market shoots way up to four dollars a mile. I, uh, let me see. A friend of mine uh, texted me the uh, DAT thing. Okay. Uh, oh no, that was fuel rates. Um, <clears throat> but the rates go up, okay, because of the the capacity and all this stuff. So the market's paying three fifty. Well, that contract freight is at two seventy five. Well, you won't even look at it. How do you expect the agents to keep the direct freight if you won't haul it? You won't haul it because the well, the market's up right now. But you can't just go to the. I mean, you can. I know. I know that some of our agents have had to go to their direct customers and say, "Guys, if you want it hauled, you're going to have to open that checkbook." And some of them aren't happy about it, but their stuff is going to sit there and rot if they don't raise the rate and put some kind of uh, premium on it. Uh, but that's, you know, but some of that stuff, they're not that you're going to go to the customer and say, listen, I can't get your stuff moved because it's too cheap right now. And they're going to tell you to have a Coke and a smile. You well, signed a contract to get me trucks, get me some damn trucks. If you've ever gotten your settlement, and one of the line items on there was additional payment to truck. That came straight out of the agent's pocket to get you to haul that freight. Yep. Straight no out of, took it right out of their pocket. Sometimes they even put it on a, on a com data check or a com check to you directly when you book the load. Yep. Um, so that's what happens when you go out and get a direct customer that you've worked your ass off for. And now we can't get a BCO to haul the freight. Let's not, I've, I've been there. I, I've, got, I've got the lashes from this, okay? <laughs> so, um, you know, and, and, so you, the, and so BCOs wonder, well, why do we need outside carriers? That's why. Yep. That's why. Let me tell you, when I hire an outside carrier as an agent, and I worked with a dispatcher, not a driver, not an owner operator, I never had a problem getting the, getting the driver to call me and check call. You get a BCO to haul that freight? <laughs> Forget about it. You don't have any idea when he's going to show up because he won't call. He won't return his call, your calls. He won't communicate with you. So, you know, agents, they, they knock on a lot of doors. They make a lot of phone calls before they get that one. Yes. They may make two, three, four, five hundred calls or visits. And they finally get somebody that gives them a chance to haul freight. And then they can't get a BCL to haul it. So that's why we have to have 20,000 outside carriers to back up the 10,000 BCOs we have. So you want to yeah. talk about the agents and how bad they treat you. Well, understand that there's two sides of that coin, you know, and, and if you got what you think you wanted and only direct freight, you wouldn't like it. There would not be enough freight on there. There wouldn't be any backhauls. There wouldn't be, you, you, you would, you would sit for days trying to get a load because there's only going to be about a third of the loads on the board that there are right now, you know? Yeah. And I don't know about you. We, we listen, we do a lot of direct freight, but we do a whole lot of not direct freight, you know? Yep. And that doesn't make it bad. I just understand how it works. You know, I, you can't get your pennies in a wad just because you call and a load's no longer available. If you understand how that works, you know, and if you don't understand how that works, what's our podcast that we explain this, Chris? Uh, Landstar controversies or something I want to say. Uh, two back, I think 84. We've got a whole podcast that explains how this works, you know. So, um, look, I, I, you know, we had we had a problem one time with a load and and, and kept trying to get a hold of the agent um, and couldn't. Well, finally figured out she's like on the other side of the planet, like literally in four o'clock you know, in the morning. One yeah. of the former Soviet republics, you know, and, you know, for her, it was like three o'clock in the morning or whatever. Right. Um, it was. And, and we, 
well, Larry explained to her, Hey, this is a 24 seven business. So answer your damn phone. Uh, we got it worked out. Um, you know, that's it. Wait a minute. Listen, we got to go back there. Cause it was a Facebook post today. Do agents answer their phones on the weekend? Well, no, they probably don't. Most of them don't. Okay. So again, understanding the system. Okay. If you right. need a load for this weekend, you need to book that load before five o'clock on Friday. Okay. Because you're, if you find a load on the load board on Saturday or on Sunday, you're, there are a few agents that might yep. have their cell phone in their pocket and might take that call. But even if they do, if that's not direct freight, they can't get a hold of the, of the 3PL and book the load. So understand, if you're a BCO and you want to run weekend freight, you need to book that load on Friday, okay, and deliver it on Monday so you don't have to have any contact over the weekend. They're not going to be there. They're not a trucking company. They don't have after hours. That's how that works. You're not going to change that, okay? You, getting on Facebook and complaining about them and listing the agency code is not going to change that, okay? You know, now, I tell you, I can tell you how to handle the weekend stuff, especially with Landstar One app, because you can now, you can't, it, <clears throat> I don't think you can do it on the PC version, but you can sort by age. All right. So if you're in a bind, a load's canceled, it's Saturday. Well, you go and, and check the board. Uh, set up an alert it'll show you loads in the order that they were posted well right. if one if it's saturday and one showed up two hours ago somebody probably, probably working there. they're probably going to answer that phone call they've had somebody break down they've had some some been some problem um but you got to do the work you have to do the work um and you have to be accepting and understand look listen i mean we did a whole podcast about the unacceptable nature of the shop industry and how every other segment of this industry is manages seconds except the shops the whole world stops when you get there okay but most brokers agents they work eight to five you know seven to five um and they're in different the time zones they're yeah. not in the same time zone as you we're the ones that did that do 24 seven, right? The drivers, you know, um, <clears throat> now I, you know, I will always credit customer service. If I've been, if I've had a problem and I can't get a hold of somebody, you know, customer service can customer service will get a hold of somebody and jerk a knot in them, uh, and get them to answer the phone. Uh, but you still may not get a resolution because the, the three PL or the customer's closed or whatever. Um, uh, but y'all it, it's trucking stuff happens, you know, uh, if you if you can't accept, um, uh, can't make my computer shut up. Sorry. <clears throat> if you if you can't accept that stuff happens, you're in the wrong business because all kinds of weird stuff happens in this industry. You know, um, back oh well, gosh, I don't episode twenty one. I think before, you know, I am I interviewed a guy named Pete Emmerheiser. Was, uh, he's a broker, still broker. We talked about blockchain. And he made this comment. He said, if the trucking industry was in charge of delivering pizzas, nobody would get hot pizza. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a miracle, a literal miracle that we get anything done because people are literally spread out all over the world. Uh, if you got, a, if you have a, a internet connection and a phone, you can book freight, you know, so you can do it from anywhere. And we have people, matter of fact, a few years ago, uh, gosh, what was in Syria. There was a Landstar agent in Syria that was killed by a bomb. You know, they dropped a bomb on his house. You know, I heard first heard that. And I'm like, there's no way. And I looked it up and I, I don't remember the details, but I dug up the story. We literally had a guy in the Middle East that was working for an agent booking freight. You know, why? Why does that guy not deserve to be able to, to work? You know, if he can get me loads, I don't care where he's at. <clears throat> you've got to put yourself in other people's shoes every once in a while right um you, you got to be a little bit considerate you know of other people's needs but like i've said a thousand times truck drivers just have this mentality where the the axis of the universe runs to the top of their precious little head and and it's such a an ignorant an unfortunate attitude to have. Um, 
And of course, when they go broke, it's everybody's fault but their own. Uh, you know. Uh, <clears throat> well, I, you've heard I've said it many, many times. Landstar is equal opportunity, and the opportunity is there, but the results are not guaranteed. You know. So the difference between people who have great results at Landstar and those who don't have great results is just their willingness to adapt, their willingness to understand and learn how things work here and, 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 and learn how to navigate through these issues, you know? Um, but their, their, their answer is, well, we've got to change the system because it's broke. No, it, it's not broke. It's, it's been here for a long time. A lot of people are very happy with the system. The ones who aren't are the ones who come here and don't understand it. And instead of learning, they just want to change it, you know. Uh, yeah, we got benefit gotta, them at the expense of everybody else. Exactly, exactly. Uh, I'll never forget the one guy who said that that people that had their own relationships and they had and and they had, had developed these these uh, customers through years and years of working with agents shouldn't be allowed to do that. All loads oh, should God. be put on the board. <laughs> I'll never forget how stupid I felt for that person. You know uh, yeah. that they that they you know. Th- Look, Landstar is the perfect example of the free market. There is no entitlement here whatsoever. The only entitlement you have is you get a, a password to the load board, okay, and you get a fuel uh, you get a fuel card that 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 you have to fill up yourself, okay, and uh, and a and an MC number on the side of the door, okay. Have at it, all right, and uh, and then after that, it's just may the best man win. And unfortunately, the 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 weaker of the, I'm going to say men, but I'm including that. I'm not, I'm not that gender specific. Okay. The weaker of the people, uh, end up getting on Facebook and whining and complaining because they can't compete. You know, they yep. don't want to compete. They can't compete. They don't understand how to compete. We got a number the other day. We, I hadn't heard this number before, but we had a couple of people in cabs class last week. And it, 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 it came out that the statistic is 60% of new BCOs at Landstar are gone within six months. Now I have to admit that, that it took me a minute to wrap my head around that. Now I'd heard another number. I'd heard that annually we were between 30 and 35% turnover rate. I, I've seen that number with my own two eyes. I hadn't heard this number, but it doesn't surprise me um, because people that come here and don't understand how to navigate these waters you know, and, and a lot of people that come to Landstar come here with, and they, they have to buy a truck to cause they didn't own a truck until they came here. Now they've got a new truck and a truck payment and they're under this pressure and they get here. They can't understand how to book loads. They can't strategize. I've got a new dispatch customer right now. I'm just, he's been here. I don't know, a couple months. I'm looking back at his previous settlements and you know, he's doing $4,000 total revenue, you know, I mean, how in the world do you, do you, do you, you know, does that work? So, you know, I mean, I'll double this income the first week, you know? Yep. Um, so it's just understanding how this works. And, and, and you, you can't, you can't, you can't operate here unless you, you know, understand how this system works. You know, that's what we're trying to do here is let you know, but the way not to understand it is to start yelling and screaming because the system is broken or the load board is screwed up or the agents are lying to you. You know, that, that's just not the case. You know, that's what you think is going on, but that's not what's really going on. <clears throat> I wish, I mean, I, I wish Landstar would put a little more emphasis on explaining how the system works in orientation. I, I think that's a reasonable um, <clears throat> expectation or, or, you know, that a lot, I think a lot of this could be, some percentage of this could be avoided if they would explain the difference between third party and direct and really make them understand from day one. But well, let me, let, me be, let me be devil's advocate advocate for that. Okay. <clears throat> in, in orientation, they explain. Well, I'm trying to think of some examples. They, 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 they explain how to do things that people leave orientation with and still don't know how to do it. And that's, that's day to day. For instance, they don't know how to download their logs. 
Okay. Right. It's right there in the book. I'm sure they go over it. You know, so to add something like that, that's not directly related to the day-to-day operation of that truck. First of all, they'd have to extend or they'd have to make it longer, which I've advocated for since I've been here, that orientation should be a week, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, look, I had a week long orientation at Transport America and that wasn't for an owner operator. That was just to be a driver there. It was a week. Okay. We have yep. people come here that are changing their entire life and we, and we give them a day and a half, two days of orientation, which the first day of that's just hazmat and, and safety, you know? So, uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it would be great, but the problem is the retention of that is not going to be there because they're, they, they don't even retain the stuff they have to know. L- look at the questions on Facebook, go to BCO mentoring, look at the questions right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, well, like you said, most, most of which can be answered. If you actually read that book, they give you, you know, they, they give you a manual. They give you a book. What, what is this book you speak of? Yeah. I, I thought about having one of the kids run to get, it. I think, I think I've got one in there in the other room. What is this book? It, it, I, isn't it? I think it's online now, isn't it? Isn't it digitized now? I believe it is. Yeah, I believe you can get this, a copy this, of it. This on. book you speak of. What is? What is this book? Yeah, it has lots of wonderful information in it. Um, <clears throat> you know, but but again, part you know, we we talk a lot about wax on, wax off in our training with our um, with our program participants, and sometimes you just have to do it. You know, that you, you, somebody can show you, it can be in a book, but you're just not going to get it until you do it. Um, but I do, I do think we all could do a better job of bridging the gap between, uh, agents and, and BCOs, you know, just getting them to, um, getting them to understand each other a little better, you know, cause I we, listen, we, I've had some agents snip off at me you know, over something. I'm like, okay, well, first of all, I can think of a real good good example (laughs) about a week ago. (laughs) Yeah. Look, how'd that work out? (laughs) Well, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to dance around that for a minute because there's some good stuff in there. Okay. Sometimes all you can do is all you can do, right? You, You, you have to communicate, right? You have to, um, you have to jump to action. Okay. So I, first time in my life, I didn't even know this was possible. I had a damn trailer door get ripped off. I mean, just popped off five, uh, uh, hinges and the damn door hit the ground. I'm like, what the hell? The age or the, the customer wanted you to back in, get loaded. When you, when you got done, they wanted you to pull out, close the doors back, back in so they could seal it. Well, I pull out and I don't have enough room on the right side of the trailer to swing the door. So I latch it back and I go to pull out. Well, I guess the wind hit the door just enough to knock that latch loose. And that trailer door rubbed up against the trailer beside me and off come that door. On, you know, I've already sat there two and a half hours trying to get loaded. So I called trailer maintenance, called safety, got all that stuff out of the way. The guy says, uh, well, nobody's going to come to you to do a door. You're going to have to take it somewhere. And I'm like, so I'm going to have to get it unloaded. Yep. So I tell the shipper, take it off. That was another two and a half hours. So over the next 12 hours of this giant cluster, uh, you know, I'm talking to the agent, um, uh, you know, talking to safety and compliance. I was on the phone with every damn body. And, and one, there's one guy uh, in one department that he decides I'm not allowed to move. Nope, 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 nope. Can't move it an inch. Okay, fine. They, they, I, they, cause they had set me up at a trailer shop 12 miles away. And then they tell me I'm not allowed to leave. I'm like, okay. So now it's like 10, 11 o'clock at night. Get this girl on the phone. It was at some 24 hour shop place. And she talks to somebody at Landstar and they said, well, just tell him to go to the truck stop. And she's like, yeah, but they were told him not to leave. She's like, yeah, I know that, but tell him to go to the truck stop. So she gives me all that in writing, texts it all to me. Well, I'm not going to drive 50 miles to the truck stop when the trailer shop's 12 miles away. So I drove to the trailer shop 12 miles away, went to bed next morning, get up. And so I told the agent, well, you know, everything's going on. I said, look, um, you know, have you got anybody to cover this load yet? No. And I said, okay. And I immediately responded and I said, well, when we, we ever give, if we can ever get this trailer fixed, you know, I'm just, I'm just a deadhead home. 
So that's what happens. I, I fixed the trailer. I did head home. We had orientation. You know, we had to do. So I get a call uh, the next day from the agent. Want to know if I picked up load. And I'm like, no, I told you I'm dead hitting home. Well, she flew off the handle. Well, I'll just call customer service. I'm like, okay. So about a week later, customer service calls. And she says, uh, well, you know, you we got this story and, you know, one of your trailer hinges broke and, you know, you didn't go back and pick up the load. And Larry, I've got Larry three way. Larry goes, is that what they told you? And she goes, <laughs> she goes, well, we like to get both sides of the story. And Larry goes, well, I've got my driver on the line. I'm going to let you let him tell you. So I went through the whole thing, book, chapter and verse, whole, detail by detail. Every person that I talked to, all the emails, all the text. Cause the agent called and gave about 10% of the story. And when only, we got, the, only the part that supported their side right. of it, oddly enough. And so this, this, <clears throat> you know, wonderful, sweet young woman at customer service said, you know what? I'm sorry this happened to all y'all. I'm just going to close this out. Y'all have a wonderful evening. <laughs> okay. But, but the reason that had a good outcome is from the second it happened. I was on the phone with everybody. I called everybody. I called the agent. I called customer service. I called or not customer service I called maintenance and I called safety and I called compliance. And, and I was, you know, cause I was CYA. Cause at first they were like, yeah, just, just strap the door inside and take off. And I'm like, yes. are you sure? And I even got an email, an email. So yeah, man, it's perfectly fine. You can. And I'm like, nah. so I called safety and safety got me compliance. And they're like, no, that sounds like a really stupid idea. <clears throat> and, um, you know, so anyway, I, it was a giant cluster. Okay, well, from word go. But let me interject here, okay? Because yeah. here's here's the important thing here. Here's the lesson that people need to learn from this. All right, the reason it went that way is because number one, we were fully documented. Okay, now they yeah. they didn't ask us to produce it, but we informed them that we had everything that we said we have it in writing. Okay, and uh, the other thing is. I'm sure that we were much more professional in our explanation of this than the passionate agent was who was making a federal case out of this to begin with by involving them. So comparing the two presentations, one of them being very professional, not, you know, not uh, p passionate and, and, uh, and very logical compared to the presentation against us, which was accusatory and very inflamed and very, you know, it, it was obvious to a third, you know, an, an uninterested or, or, or an independent third person, yeah. you know, who was trying to do what here, you know? So, um, you know, just keep that in mind when you're dealing with customer service, just be a professional. This is not the first time I intervention I've had with customer service. And I've actually been complimented in the past because of the way that we just handled it, you know, professional, not, you know, all, you know, calling names and, you know, da, 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 da. We, we just presented the facts in a very factual way. And we had our ducks in a row. You know, that was the big thing. And they didn't challenge that because they knew we weren't lying. So if it ain't wrote down, it didn't, it didn't happen. happen. <laughs> uh, let's roll through a couple comments. I saw some comments here. Uh Twitch SK, do y'all book your driver's loads or let the drivers choose and learn? Well, when someone comes to the program new, um, we do all their booking for them because um, we have to, you know, unplug their brain, rewire it, and plug it back in. And we've got to stretch them and get them to understand the system. We've had some start dispatching as little as 90 days um, and others take longer. You know, it just depends on the individual. Obviously, this master's program that we've created is to turn you into a successful BCO. And you're never going to do that unless, um, you know, we let you out there, uh, and start booking your own stuff and, you know, and make stupid choices that you have to learn from and, uh, bump your head a few times. But, uh, you know, we have, uh, well, if you count me, we've got three that are booking their own loads and, and three that aren't, you know, so, uh, we got three new guys that we do all their booking for them, but eventually, yeah, they will, uh, uh, book their own. 
Well, and, and understand too, part of that is that and that that's the problem. That, that's the main reason why 60% of new BCOs leave is because the pressure of having to do, have to be in business, drive to truck and deliver freight and book loads is overwhelming for someone who's never done it before. So we wouldn't be doing these guys any favors to bring them here and just throw them. I mean, that's, that's what most BCOs do when they put a driver in one of their trucks, they throw them the keys and go, here you go at it. That's not what we're doing here. We're trying to get, we're pacing this so that they can, can, uh, can grasp it gradually uh, and, and, and not be overwhelmed with it. Plus we're trying to make sure that their income is a certain level plus our income at a certain level. I mean, we, right. we have to protect ourselves here too. We got trucks here. We need to make money out of. So it doesn't make any sense at all to, to allow somebody to come here and book their own loads. So that's not what we do, but at their, when the time is right for them and they're ready to do it, then we ease into that. We still monitor it. <clears throat> I mean, we've got somebody right now that's booking their, their own loads and been doing it for a while, but we're even this week we're, we, you know, we've kind of coached up a little bit, some things uh, to try to make that a little bit better for them. And so um, that's our desire is for them obviously to do that. Cause when we, when we're done with them, they've got to be able to function as a BCO. And so that's the ultimate goal, but it's not something that we look at at day one. You know, it's, yeah. CRC's in the house. <laughs> there's one of our, there's one of our favorite agents right there. Yeah, man. We do a ton of work with CRC. Love y'all stuff. Beautiful, beautiful place. Uh, you guys to work with. <clears throat> Outlaw Hot Shop booked three loads this week. Eleven thousand one hundred and eighty dollars, my best week yet. Loving me some Landstar. Go get cool. you some. There you go. Uh, you got to strike while the iron's hot, man. And the yeah. and the market is on fire right now. Um, now look, let me give you a little financial advice here, guys. If you're not saving money right now, you're making a big, big mistake. Okay, we're on the we're on the top of the bubble right now. It's not going to stay this way. Okay, it's that worm is going to turn. If you're spending everything you're making right now, you're making a huge, huge, huge mistake. Yep. With the rates the way they are, you should be chucking at least 25% of your revenue away. You know, there's a, don't raise your standard of living just because you're making a bunch of money. That's what fools do. Okay. Smart guys are going to put that money in the bank. All right. And have it for when things get, when the pandemic comes again. Okay. Now that the, now that the government knows that we'll, sucker for this this won't be the last one okay oh no now we've proved to them that it works you know we have look at the compliance we have walk, walk in look at the number of masks you know how many masks have been sold since last march listen dude if i could have invested in plexiglass and oh my and god masks uh and vinyl i guess for all the signs uh gosh mighty it's been crazy uh, Ken and Mary looked on the board, uh, 45,000 loads, 11,000 of them are direct. There you go. There uh, you go. That's about right. Now <clears throat> and there's 10, and there's 10,000 BCOs. Can imagine the fight for those loads tomorrow morning. Okay. Yep. Oh, talking strategy. Let me, let's throw this in there. Okay. We stack loads. Okay. We stack loads. We will continue to stack loads. We're booked out right now. Uh, we've we've got we're booked out all this week, and half of the following week. All right, why? Well, because I can make about three phone calls right now and book a truck. All right, with good freight. If I'm waiting till tomorrow to book a load for tomorrow, I've got to make about thirty phone calls to book one load, and it's a race to the bottom. Okay. So the answer to that is, well, you're going to have to, you're, some of those are going to cancel and you're going to have to redo it. Yeah, that happens once in a while. But we got nine trucks. I might have to undo two loads a week that cancel out of all those. So it's not enough of a problem to throw the whole strategy out with just because you're afraid one of them is going to cancel. You know, mm -hmm. the, 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 the general effect, the bottom line is we get better loads we get them before everybody else is out there trying to get them. Okay. A lot of our loads we get from, from agents like CRC, they don't even put the load on the board. You know, we yep. call and say, what do you got for next week? Those loads aren't even posted yet. Well, what do you want? Well, here's what we got. Well, we pick what we want, you know? So don't be afraid to stack loads. Yeah. It's going to put pressure on you because now you know, you got to be at a certain place at a certain time, but you're in the big league here. Okay. 
it's you, you know you you can't just lollygag around and do one load at a time you're only going to do you're going to cut your income by about 25 percent by doing that because you're not going to be able to sit there and get a load you know for this afternoon you're going to end up getting one tomorrow you're going to waste half a day where if you booked that a week or two ago you could have delivered that load and picked up another this afternoon at another load to your week you know yep. um so that's our strategy i don't you know i take it for what it's worth um but we don't have any trucks out here doing six or seven thousand dollars a week, you know. So. so Terry Alexander says I answered did so twice today on Saturday. I guess I guess Terry's an agent. Terry must be an agent. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Terry. So you know, some guy. I mean, look, it's agents are just like BCOs. Okay, they can run their business the way they want to. There's no requirement. There's no rules. They don't even. They don't have to be open any day if they don't want to. Right. So when you're dealing with an agent, find one that you like, find one that you like working with and work with them. OK, but just because one doesn't work on Saturday doesn't mean he's a bad guy. You know, I don't like to work on Saturday either. That doesn't mean I, 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 I have to once in a while. So, um, you know, you just can't judge everybody because of the, of the actions of one or two people, you know, uh, these guys are just running their business the way they see fit, just like you're driving your truck. The way you said, how would you like it if Landstar came and told you that you must drive X number of hours every day? You know, um, you know, it, it, it wouldn't go over very well. You, you, oh, you go, I no. drive when the hell I want to, you know? Yeah. Well, that's that's how agents are. They don't they don't they're not required to meet any kind of hours thing for you. You know, so. Uh, just look, understand how this, understand how this is. You know, we're, we're 10,000 independent businessmen doing business with 1400 other independent businessmen under the umbrella of Landstar who acts as a referee when there, when there needs to be a referee. No. Catch cat says, do you guys work 26 foot trucks? We do not. No. Um, we know some people that, you know, that are in that express, but <clears throat> I haven't found any. Not we listen. We try not to give advice for stuff that we know nothing about. That's why I don't dispatch flatbed because I don't know anything about it, and I would don't I would not give you advice on express trust because I know no, there's some good people here at Landstar that do, and some of them have Facebook pages. Okay, um, so check out some of those. Uh, I know that Trucking Solutions Group has a lot of express trucks in it. Mm -hmm. So you probably can find a mentor in there, somebody to work with there. They're there. It's called Landstar Express America, LEA. So Ken and Mary, if you succeed, it's your fault. If you fail, it's your fault. Oh, you better preach. Um, <laughs> you know, that's, that's one of the things that I learned. You know, I would tell people when I first got here, um, somebody asked me, you know, about Landstar and I say, look, here's a, here's a great thing. If you fail, it's your fault. If you succeed also your fault. Um, one of the things I always say that you know the the most the the most beautiful thing about Landstar is freedom. The worst thing about Landstar is freedom. Oh, because yeah. everybody can't handle freedom. Okay, freedom is not what some people need. Some people need kicking ass and be told to go to work, and they come here. It's kind of like graduating from high school and going to college. They don't take attendance anymore. They could care less if you show up to class. So a lot of freshmen and college don't go to class okay when in high school they had to because they took attendance and mom and daddy would get a report it's the same thing here you just graduated nobody cares okay so the freedom could be a great thing it could be a big problem for you if you're not mature enough to handle it so um sharon says you have to learn the culture my husband and i had great sex with success with land star yeah it, it it is a it is a culture and it and it's you know, I think it's a culture shock. I remember coming here from Anderson where I had a fleet manager, great fleet manager, probably the best one there. Um, and we had a great relationship. And when I got to Landstar, I went down to Dublin, Virginia, to the Volvo plant to pick up my trailer. So I got an empty. I got my log into the load board. I started booking freight. And, and creepy is the word that I would use to describe it because there was nobody to answer to. Landstar didn't care. I mean, like, if I would stay home a couple of weeks, they'd be like, are you still alive? Where's your trailer? You know? <laughs> um, but 
<clears throat> not, you know, I, I'm just going to go home. You know, I'll just deadhead home. I don't have to ask anybody's permission. I don't have to get clearance. I'm just, I'm just not going to book a load. You know, it's just, it's so weird to get over here <clears throat> and, and have that freedom because, you know, freedom is not easy. You know, a, a, a lot of people claim they want it. Um, but you know, I have exercised a lot of Liberty in the last 12 months and there's a whole lot of people in this country that hate Liberty and they hate, <clears throat> they hate watching people exercise it, you know? Um, but you know, I don't do things and make choices because some guy said so, you know, uh, <clears throat> well, he, you know, well, he, he wrote words down on paper. I don't give a shit. You know, I, I, that's not how I make decisions because some guy said so, you know, and, um, and that can have consequences, you know, people can get mad, they can get upset, um, you know, and you have freedom to fail. That, <clears throat> that's a hard pill to swallow. You are free to succeed and you are free to fall on your face, but you're not suffer. free, but you're not free to blame it on somebody else when you do. That's the, that's the problem we have here is that, you know, people, it, it, it's everybody's fault except their own. It's the market. It's the, it's the, it's the load board. It's the agents. It's this, it's that. But yet there's thousands of other people here who, who, who flourish, you know, uh, how, how is that possible? You know, how can it be the load board? when people make literally hundreds of thousands of dollars off the low floor, you know, how can it be yep. the agents when we have agents that, you know, we make tons of money with, you know, well, I had, I had, I called on a load one day. It's probably a couple of weeks ago. And I think it was just a difference in culture. Like, you know, American versus foreign kind of culture thing. And, you know, this guy was very enthusiastic and, um, I called about a load and he said, you know, he calls the customer, you know, calls the broker and he comes back and, and he gives me a, uh, a delivery time. I'm like, uh, I'm like, man, I, I can't do it. It, it delivers too late in the day but this is good load. This is a good load. And I'm like, yeah, dude, I get that. It's great. But yeah. I, I, but it doesn't work for me. Well, why, why not? Why can't you take this load? And I'm like, okay, buddy, listen, I can't do it because it has too much hold time. Right. If it delivered at 10 o'clock in the morning, it'd be perfect, but I can't be stuck on this load till three o'clock in the afternoon. And I, I can say he was upset about it. He just didn't get it. You know, and, and I'm like, dude, what part of I can't do this load do you not understand, right? And I can understand people getting frustrated, but I think it's just a culture difference. He's like, well, this is good load. Why can't you take a load? I, I have this load, you know, and I'm like, dude, just stop, okay? I can't do it. Um, but, you know, I, what are you going to do? You know, I, I have the final say in whether or not I say, yes, book it. If I don't say book it, we ain't booking it. It's that's it. My, no, it's a complete sentence. <clears throat> uh, Ken and Mary, I work enough to keep trailer utilization from taking the trailer back. Usually about three days a week. <laughs> oh, they wouldn't get it that quick. Ken. you got a little more yeah, time than that. You got, you got 10. Um, well here, so here's, you know, <laughs> one of the first land I know where guys, you I know where you parked that trailer. I'm coming after it. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly where it is. <laughs> one of the first guys I ever met, because you know, when I was at Anderson, of course, you know, it was always Landstar was like this holy grail, you know. Oh, well, I'm gonna go to Landstar, you know. And so I start talking to Landstar drivers and I run into this guy somewhere. He's driving an old FLD, you know long ago paid for and he's got a tr his own trailer with it's insulated and propane tanks and heaters and load bars and i mean this you know 
and I'm talking and he's like, yeah, he, he did all the walls himself and he installed all this, that, and the other, and he held some kind of pharmaceuticals, medical equipment and, and, you know, and he's like, well, I, you know, I drive about 60,000 miles a year. Um, and I went, wow, you know, well, you, I think you've talked about, you know, the Landstar retirement plan, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, there's nothing wrong with coming to Landstar, getting everything paid for. And if all you need to do is work three days a week to meet all your responsibilities, that's awesome, right? The problem is people come in here, they're dead up their eyeballs. They go buy some stupid truck that's four times too expensive, and they want to get on the three-day-a-week plan. Y'all, that don't work. That's how you end up bankrupt, divorced, and broke. Because you got to come here and you got to hit the, the ground and you got to run and you got to make money to get all that stuff paid down. Well, if you're debt free, you know, and you got like a $2,000 a month living expense, well, yeah, work as much as you need to. But that's the problem. They, they come here and, and they want to get on that plan. And then, well, I need, I need $4 a mile loads that are a thousand miles a week. That ain't happening. It's not happening. You need to get out there. You need to pour yourself into this business for two or three years, get your truck paid for. Now you can take your foot off the gas and you can relax a little bit and you can enjoy some vacations. You can enjoy your life, but not with 150, you know, $900 a week truck payment. Um, you know, you're going to spend all your time paying that payment. Well, it goes back to that cost per mile. If your business model is such that your cost per mile exceeds the market rate for freight, there is not any you, there, there is nothing that you're going to be able to do to be successful in the trucking business. You can't make people pay you ten dollars a mile because you bought a eight million dollar truck. It just won't work that way. You know, I'm sorry, but. You, you have to have a business model that is, that is practical, that will work, you know? And, uh, and I, I, you know, I, you know me, I'm not an advocate of buying new trucks at all. Um, because even if it worked right now, right now is not going to, it's not sustainable. <laughs> if you think that rates are going to stay this way until you get that truck paid off, you're wrong. And oh, by the way, Fuel's been going up. Fuel, fuel, fuel's not. Fuel will be an issue before the year's out for some people. Now I won't even go into. I won't make everybody mad by telling you how much I want fuel to be five dollars a gallon. But we'll do that another time. But I, I'm. I can't wait. You know, for it to be there. But um, I can hear. I feel the darts already in my forehead. You know what? I don't know. Um. Everybody knows the fuel surcharge in the 30 cent range now at Landstar. So, um, what were we talking about? I got sidetracked. Ken was working three days a week. Well, that's, that works for Ken. I know Ken, I know his situation. That's, that's, that's his business model. It works. <clears throat> Landstar should point. All new BCOs. <laughs> well, you know, I want to, this, is a, this is a good place for me to interject this. I, I have to tell you something. I've had several emails and phone calls because it's been three weeks since we've done a podcast. And I, I apologize to all you people that are crazy enough to plan your schedule around these. But um, I just want to say I'm, I'm humbled and, and, and very, very, very flattered that, you know, that you guys, you know, like what we're doing here. And, and, and this is information that helps you. It, it, it means all the world to me. I, I've said it before. I, I don't even, I didn't even know what a podcast was when we started doing this, you know? Uh, and, uh, I still don't understand why people watch them and listen to them, but I'm, I'm glad that you do. And I'm glad that what we're doing is, is helpful because, um, you know, I, you never know. We're sitting here talking to a screen and a mic. You know, I have no idea who's watching or listening. But, you know, our, our subscribers are, are going well. We're getting so much feedback and we're getting 
this is the other thing that I'm not, I don't want to spill the sauce too much here, but man, the, the recruiting effort that, that this, that this gives us the recruiting, the, 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 the quality people that we talk to that oh, yeah. want to come. And we've, we've got, we've hired three guys, quality, quality, outstanding people just in the last week, you know, um, and I'm, I'm out here trying to buy trucks and get trucks put on so I can hire more of you. There's so many people that have stuck their hands up and said, Hey, we want to be a part of this. And we talk to them and they're, they're really, really good people, you know? And, um, so, uh, I just want to thank you for all those, all the kind things you said. I had a person call yesterday and just the things that they said, I, it, 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 I, I guess I don't think about how valuable this is to some people. I mean, we, we, we think it's valuable to, for our business, but, um, I, I just, uh, I just want to say thank you. And, 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 and I am very flattered by, by all the, the nice things that you guys have said. So I have an assignment here for Carol. Um, I want you to, I want you to call Jacksonville. And I want you to record the call when you call and tell them that we should. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Listen, we listen. We love Landstar. Don't, and I've said it a hundred times. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be anywhere else but Landstar. But you know, we we don't. We kind of we kind of don't mince words here. And you know, sometimes we step on some toes down there. And and uh, so I don't think you're going to get very far with your with your idea here. Uh, I, I offered one time to, t- <laughs> to take over the cabs program and and uh and do uh a mini cmc for uh instead of the cabs but uh i never got a call back about that idea so well well <laughs> uh, thank you for for saying that it's uh it's uh, uh <laughs> yeah, that's scary i got click happy here yeah but larry i thought you were talking to me directly well i didn't say your name i didn't even say your gender okay i said that <laughs> you're them uh, I like this one came to Landstar with a 2009 truck paid off and $3,000 in the bank a year ago. And today I have over 50,000 stacked and I paid down on a house 40,000. That's my first year at Landstar. Go get you some Bobby. Yeah, That's, good awesome. job, Bobby. That's doing it, man. You, 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 you understand. Don't let up. Listen, I've got a, I've got a podcast. I think it's 55, how to be a millionaire in this business in 10 years. Okay. That's how you do it right there. That's how you're on your way. So, Go back to 55. It's called truck and grow rich. Yeah. And, um, it's just a plan that I have and, uh, I can promise you it works. I guarantee it works. So, um, good job. That that's what I'm talking about. Making and saving money. I used to have an old uh, a guy that I think was Art Williams. He's a football coach and I read a lot of his books and his inspiration to me. He's part of what is, that's where I get my inspiration for helping other people. He has a book called pushing up people and, but anyway, that's what Art would always say, make and save money. He would never say go out and make money. He would say make and save money, make and save money, make and save money. Okay. And that's important. Good job. Uh, Charlie, operations manager for CRC. We love working with you guys. Look forward to working with you more. Absolutely, Charlie. Feelings um, mutual, Charlie. We love you guys. You know? Yeah. I mean, I, I CRC is kind of become an anchor because I just know I can go and couple different directions and i'll just call crc and get the girls on the phone and hey what you got you know i know i'm either gonna go here or i'm gonna go there which one's gonna be um so yeah that's a great agency and and lots yeah. of great agency c-a-n-d-u-v c-a-k um, careful careful you're giving away all our secrets well you know i'm, I'm gonna just give them a shout out because they're 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 the good guys you know c-i-f c-i-f yeah. f-l-s oh yeah they would love FLS. CJW. Yeah. Um, there's lots, there's so many good agents. And, um, you know, listen, y'all, we book a, a ton of freight with Gwen Trucking. Okay. Um, if they just change their hold music. Oh, my God. That's so terrible. It it's is. Awful. Um, what is truth? <laughs> If you you could be a tiny little worm or a big human being, <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, uh, but you know, because the AU agents you always used, to, you know, that that's uh, uh, Denton Austin, Austin Taylor. Yeah, you know, they always well, they got replaced as the most hated agency on Facebook, and uh, but we're not going to mention that one, right? <clears throat> oh, Johnny Bravo. Um, I'm not. Look, if they've got a load and they can book it, I'm going to take it. 
You know, I, 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 it's freight. It fits in my trailer. This do not haul list will cost you money. Okay. Oh. If I can give you an advice, tear up your do not haul list and throw it out the window. Okay. Just because you, you've had one bad experience, that doesn't mean anything. Those mega agencies have got, you call back, you probably not even get the same person on the phone again. It doesn't matter. You're shooting yourself in the foot. Yeah. Okay. You're just, you, yeah, you're, you're, you're the proud old guy that's going, oh, I'm not going to do that again. And then you don't call them and that's the load you needed to, that, that would, that's just stupid. Okay. Now, you've had, when you've had 10 or 12 bad experiences with an agent, yeah, probably you're not going to call on those loads, but you know, but still, I, even the, even the issue, it's not, I don't have a do not haul this. Right. I may ask a lot of questions next time. I call that agent and I may prepare myself for the fact that it might not go, but if it work, if it makes it work, if it, if it puts this sweet together and makes it work, I'm going to give them a shot. Okay. Yeah. Now they may get an earful, you know, but <laughs> I'm not going to sit there and go, I'm never going to do that. Those are words that you will eat. I promise you, you oh, will yeah. eat those words. Okay. Yep. Well, I think maybe we've done all the damage we can do for one episode. You got anything else you want to put in here? Well, one last thing. You know, we talked to a guy in the cat past couple of weeks that one would had reached out to us about coming to work for us. Yeah. And we were actually we were interviewing him while we were on a road trip. And um I, I just want to say if you're in a job right now where I mean, where, where you're so mis look, I, we would love to be able to take everybody that calls. We, we can't, we don't have the trucks. Okay. Uh, but there's lots of good company jobs out there. If you think you're working for the only company that will give you what you're got, you're, you're making a huge mistake. We, this, this, this individual, I mean, I'm, I was speechless at what I heard him say. The, the number of, of, of laws that they required him to break on a daily basis that would put him in jail, certainly lose his CDL if he ever got caught. But he did it because he thought that was the only job he could get, you know? And I'm thinking to myself, my God, you know, if, if that is the, if, if that's your self-worth that you think that you have to work for a place that runs an illegal operation, I mean, look, I talk about how easy it is to make a, a to be a millionaire in this business, but you know what? You have to have a CDL and a pretty clean one to do that. Yep. If you're jeopardizing your CDL with who you're working for, you have no chance of being a millionaire's business because you won't be here long enough. You know? If you're if, if you're doing things that are out of service violations, you're doing things that you can get in big trouble for, not to mention if you happen to have a wreck and kill somebody while you're doing it. Yep. This, that, that's, that's a disaster waiting to happen. So even if you can't get a job, even if you can't come to Landstar or whatever, and maybe you've got to clean some things up, but at least value yourself enough not to work for these um, predatory uh, employers that just chew up drivers and spit them out, you know. So yeah. um, I'm off my soapbox, but I know you well, about you know, about twenty about twenty five percent of the interviews that we do turn into counseling sessions. Yeah, that's true. You know? That's true. Um, people, I can I can sense the desire to do this, but there's some people we have to say, you know, you're not ready for this. You know, you, you got some stuff to get worked out, um, before you come and try to, to do something like this, because it's not for everybody, you know, just being at Landstar is not for everybody. Being in business is not for everybody. And this program that we do here is it's high impact. It's high intensity. Um, and <clears throat> if you're not ready for it, it's going to be a disaster, you know, and, um, but so, you know, company drivers, man, like you said, they get chewed up, spit out. And they just get brainwashed with this nonsense from these, these, this corporate brainwashing. It's just disgusting. Um, you know, and so that's, that's another part of what we have to do is, is 
you know, to kind of deprogram people from, you know, either the nonsense they learned in government schools or, or the corporate brainwashing they got working for some big company that, you know, just wanted to turn them into a robot, an unthinking robot. And you can't do that here. You cannot be a robot. You have to, <clears throat> you have to be a problem solver. You got to be able to think on your feet. So one, one last little thing here. This is a, this is a, 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 this is a sort of a promotion thing here at the very, if you're at Landstar or you're thinking of coming to Landstar and you're having trouble with what we talked about tonight, load board, load strategy, you know, it's overwhelming to you. You know, um, we do, we do, we do offer help. We do have Chris and I now have a formalized dispatch program that we can, um, put you on and we can offer a variety of services from just basic dispatching to mentoring to accounting and, but whatever, but we can, uh, we can give you some help. Um, and if you're interested, reach out to us and we'll, we'll, we'll talk to you about it, but, uh, we can, you know, we've got the time, we've got the expertise, we've got the relationships, you know, we can help you raise your income. If you're not, if you're not doing seven, 8,000 gross a week, you know, you should be there during this rate season right here. It, it ought to be between eight, nine and 10. Um, now drive vans are forte. Um, I don't platforms not going to be probably something that we're going to have a lot of help with. I mean, we could help, but that's not where our, where our, where our um, relationships lie, but we probably could still give you some advice and maybe help you out a little bit. So, so if you're interested in doing that, reach out to us and we'll talk to you more about it. But uh, we've been trying to work on some things that we can do for people that aren't working for us directly. And this was our first step was to do this thing with BCOs. And then we're continuing to trying to work on things that we can do for other people that aren't even at Landstar. So, but yeah. this is at least a step in that right direction. So yeah, I'll work on getting a page on the website set up for that. So we can put that information up. People can get to it. All right. Y'all, we appreciate everybody watching and listen. Make sure you share, um, uh, give us some algorithm love on that YouTube and like, and subscribe. And, uh, until next time, everybody be safe. We'll talk to you next time. Good night, everybody.